Thanks for watching and welcome to the inverse Fourier transform, which is a kind of way of undoing the Fourier transform because we all make mistakes sometimes. Now, you may wonder, why do we need this? If you remember, the key for solving the heat equation is really to write the Gaussian, so E of minus T kappa square T, as the Fourier transform of some function where what is G, it's precisely the heat curve. So G of xt is 1 over square root 4 pi dt, E of minus x squared over 4 dt which really raises the question, can you always do that? In other words, given any f, f of kappa, can you write f as the Fourier transform of some fun other function g? So can you write f of kappa as the Fourier transform of some function g for some g. g. And the beautiful answer is yes, at least formally. And that is what the inverse Fourier transform is all about. So what is the inverse Fourier transform? It deceivingly looks like the Fourier transform. So I wanna remind you, f hat of kappa is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x e i kappa x dx. Now, the inverse Fourier transform, so f, it's called y check of x. So that's the first thing, it's a function of x. And that is a little pesky factor of one over two pi and an integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of kappa and then e minus i kappa x, so there's an extra minus sign, kappa x. And since it's a function of x, this means we integrate with respect to kappa. So once again, compare the two definitions they're very similar, but the main differences are f y check is a function of x. We have the 1 over 2 pi, the minus, and we integrate with respect to kappa. And the beautiful fact is the inverse Fourier transform answers precisely the question that we had at the beginning. So fact for any f, f is the Fourier transform of some function g. So f of kappa is g hat of kappa, where g is the inverse Fourier transform. So g of x is f y check of x. Or if you plug in g in this equation, it implies that f is the Fourier transform of the inverse Fourier transform. So they kind of cancel out if you wish. And so I just want to do two practice examples with that. And in a future video, we will see an application of this. So the first thing is, again, in theory, it works for any function. So let's find a function whose Fourier transform so find a function g, g of x, such that g hat of kappa is, let's say, 1 over kappa squared plus a plus. In other words, this is sometimes phrased as find the inverse Fourier transform of 1 over kappa squared plus find the inverse Fourier transform of 1 over kappa squared plus 1. 
And well, again, by our you know, fact, the answer is literally the inverse Fourier transform of this function. So answer, so g of x, it's literally y check of 1 over kappa squared plus 1, and it's just 1 over 2 pi integral from minus infinity to infinity of 1 over kappa squared plus 1 e minus i kappa x and then d kappa. And of course, here, I do not attempt to evaluate the integral. It is pretty much impossible to do so, you know, using elementary functions. But again, the cool thing is, at least in theory, we have this formula. So given any function, you can write this as a Fourier transform. That said, of course, the nice thing is sometimes you can do it explicitly. So now let's do it for the case of the Gaussian. So let's find the inverse Fourier transform of e of minus 3 kappa squared and you could just plug into the formula of the inverse Fourier transform but remember because we have a Gaussian we have a much more explicit formula because I would like to remind you that the Fourier transform of e minus ax squared is, I believe, square root of pi over a of e of minus kappa squared over 4a. And so in particular, we can back solve. So e of minus kappa squared over 4a is square root of a over pi and e of minus ax squared half. And notice those are very similar, right? Because the idea is we want to write e of minus 3 kappa squared as a half, but we know how to do this of minus e, e minus kappa squared over 4a. So all you have to do is to compare the exponents. And so, minus 3 kappa squared is minus kappa squared over 4a. Now, there's some nice simplifications. This cancels out and this cancels out. And then we get 1 over 4a is 3. And then we basically get 4a is 1 third. And so a is 1 over 12. And then, so plugging this in, we then get, so once again, we have e of minus 3 kappa squared. Again, the idea is you want to write this as a half, but we know that this is the same as e of minus kappa squared over 4a. 4a is 1 12th, the sum of the harmonic series. Just kidding. And that is the same as square root of, I believe, a over pi, pi, and then e of minus ax squared, hat. So now all you need to do is plug in a equals 1 12th. So it's square root of 1 12th over pi e of minus 1 12th x squared hat. And then we're basically done because now we have square root of 1 over 12 pi and then e of minus x squared over 12 hat. And you see that's precisely what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to write e of minus 3x squared as a hat. And so, in the end, our answer is g of x is square root of 1 over 12 pi and then e of minus x squared over 12. 
And once again, we will see the beauty of this in the next video because the inverse Fourier transform will literally help us solve any partial differential equation. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.